let's take a look at Poundland's watch charger. And this says compatible with Apple Watch. It's putting emphasis in just being a generic watch charger. I don't know how compatible it is with others. Maybe there, there is a certain compatibility. Inside the packet is the charger. It's very small. That's what you'd expect for something the watch. It's covered in protective plastic film. And these uh, do seem to have a little magnet. Uh, which side is a magnet? I think it's this side. Yes, they do seem to have a little magnet in them just for making sure that whatever you attach them to it sort of aligns up and sticks onto it. Right, tell you what, let's zoom down this. And let's attempt to open this up. I could plug it in, but I don't think much is going to happen. I shall slip my spudger down the side. Is this going to work? I'm not really sure. Am I just going to stab myself here? Ooh, that is kind of well glued in. I can hear it cracking and making creaking noises. That That's a good sign. Oh. Oh, right, there's the coil. I have taken a divot of a... Uh, that's very rubbery feeling. Is this going to come out? Let's try and prise it up. That is very rubbery feeling. I may have to use brute force in this. Where's my schnapps? I think going to have to be destructive in the way I get in here. So I shall go in here. Ah, that's better. That's the sounds we want to hear. Crunching the splintering noises. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, I've ripped one of the wires as well. That's lovely. That's definitely not going to work now. Or is it? Because that looks like the multi-layer wire here that they've basically taken lots of strands and twist them together. Possibly to lower impedance. There is an effect for that. I can't remember what it's called. But it does uh, suit this construction. So what do we have here? We have a uh, tiny circuitry. That's what we have. Well, the first thing I'm spotting is this little H-bridge, uh, presumably of MOSFETs and stacks of capacitors. Right, tell you what. I'm going to take a picture of this and then we can examine it closer. One moment, please. So here is a zoomed in shot of the circuit board. I would like to explain if the if you're wondering why there's this background here at the moment. I'm currently working away from home. That's why the sound is completely different. I'm currently in crew accommodation while working at Royal Edinburgh Military Tattoo. And it means I'm limited for test equipment as well, which means that uh, the size of the circuit board versus the size of the probes of the test equipment I'm using is quite challenging for probing things about, even doing continuity. The current location is also why the patrons have had an absolute barrage of backstage sort of videos, little snippets of uh, what's happening backstage, just to fill in while I was uh, working and not able to put video content out at the same rate. But anyway, let's take a look at the circuit board. It has an annoyingly anonymous chip. I'm pretty sure the pinout is reminiscent of a standard Qi battery charger. However, the design is such that we have got a H-bridge of MOSFETs, AO9T and A19T, P-channel and N-channel MOSFETs. Other things that are worthy of note are this stack of four capacitors in series with one of the output leads with the option to add another two in. Uh, that means that in each change of polarity, uh, there is a limit to how much current can flow through that coil. I don't know if that's a, its primary function of that, uh, if it's just basically limiting that amount of energy that goes through, or if it's a protective device as well. The incoming supply has lots of decoupling capacitors around it, and uh, it also has a 0.05 ohm resistor, possibly for sensing, because I see a 1K resistor coming off here that leads up to one of the pins in this chip. Right, tell you what, I have drawn this schematic out. I shall grab it. Let's take a look at their schematic. Uh, it's a very abbreviated schematic because um, certain bits of this, uh, without knowing what this chip is, I'd be basically taking blind stabs in the dark with very big test probes on these components to work out how they're connected and it doesn't it's not going to make much sense without knowing what this chip is and it appears to be proprietary it's not the sort of thing you're going to be able to go on aliexpress and buy buy five to make your own stuff with because i think it's kind of dedicated to this task it is most certainly based well, possibly based on a microcontroller or is it an ASIC an application specific integrated circuit 
But anyway, look at the bits that matter, the bits that will be most useful to us for uh, designing our own stuff based around that technology. Here's a 5 volt rail. Here's a 0 volt rail. The incoming supply is over here. It's got a couple of these uh, filtering capacitors. It's got that uh, 0.05 ohm resistor, which is not a fuse, but it could act as a fuse. I've just kind of added the resistor afterwards there. And strangely, it's got a little capacitor across it. It's got the 1K sense resistor. Is that sensing load? It could be sensing the current, or could it be detecting the modulation when the two things communicate? I'm not sure. But then we have a big cluster of four capacitors uh, to provide stability, because this is going to be switching quite high current pulses. And then here's the coil with the capacitors in series with it. They've adjusted the number of capacitors to match probably the coil. That might be a universal circuit board. And when the control circuit turns on A and D, this end of the coil will connect to positive and this end will connect to negative. And then when it turns on C and B, uh, this end will be connected to positive and that end will be connected to negative. So it os oscillates at high frequency and uh, that is what generates the magnetic field that couples the energy across. The construction of this, let's uh, move this out of the way. In the case, the, on the back of the circuit board was this double-sided sticky pad, quite a thick foam one, with a magnet in the middle. The magnet is the one that is being used to, I'm just looking for something metal here, it's being used to actually align things with the coil. And then we've got this strange rubbery. The coil is sat into, uh, this almost certainly contains ferrite, but it's flexible. It's bendable. That's strange. Uh, I should do that, not in the black ground, but the black background. There you go. That is, is rubbery and flexible. That's quite unusual. And then this coil does have the multiple uh, cores as such. It's got multiple strands, possibly to make it easier to get a high current coil in a small area, but there are other effects associated with that. It's very neat. It's very compact. But... Uh, there's only a certain distance you can go and it is limited by that chip. See, without knowing what that chip is and whether it's even available, you'll never really be able to fully determine what's happening in there. But it's interesting, the, the way of driving this car with an H-bridge with those capacitors in the series is uh, well worth knowing for technical reference for your own designs. So there we have it. That's um, Poundland's uh, USB-powered watch charger. It's basically a little cheat charger, but a super tiny version.